Hi folks, Harry Frank from Red Giant here. In this tutorial, I'd like to show you Glow from Red Giant Universe. You'll locate Glow inside the Glow category of your Universe Effects. I'll apply Glow to a clip here in Adobe Premiere. Now, if you've used the old version of Glow, you'll see a bit of a difference in the overall look. We've overhauled the Glow process in this plugin to be a lot more realistic. If I turn this intensity up and the overall size up, we'll see that it has a smoother, more realistic exponential fall off. We can actually look at the old glow process by going to the quality pop-up and selecting the legacy option here, and we'll see exactly what the old glow process was. This was essentially a Gaussian blur pushed into overbrights and then mixed back in with the original. And this makes for a more diffuse glow, but it is not something that works very well with small details. So if I jump to other examples here, we can see that the new version of Glow is a lot more responsive to fine details like strokes and edges. Let's talk about the controls in Universe Glow. Up here at the top, we have the input channel, which allows us to define what part of the image we are looking at to process the glow. And RGBA is looking at the entire image, including the color information, whereas lightness strips away the color information and luminance is very similar to lightness, just weighted for human perception, where some of the channels are intensified for our human vision. Red, green, and blue will glow the individual red, green, and blue channels, which I think is a cool and useful addition to this plugin. Now, the threshold is a standard threshold control. It maxes out at 100, and this controls how much of the image is being processed by the glow. So a higher value will mean less of the image is being processed, and a lower value will mean more of the image is being processed. How far above and below this threshold value that we are processing is the threshold softness. Size is the overall size of the glow, and intensity is the overall intensity of the glow, which is pretty straightforward. The fall off relates to the new exponential fall off that we are generating with the glow. It is going to define the overall intensity of the outlying areas of the glow. So those distant soft areas of the glow are going to be more intense with a high fall off, and then those are going to go away with a lower fall off. So essentially a lower fall off is going to be a glow that is tighter to the original threshold source. We have individual width and height controls here simply by adjusting width and height. And we have a gamma control here to fine tune the gamma of the glow that you are rendering. The color group contains the saturation information. So if you'd like to desaturate or oversaturate your glow, you can do that there as well as a color tint to the glow. So if I go in here and define a color to be injected into the glow, I can define that there and then turn up the color strength and push that color into my glow. The aberration control is going to split the glow into individual chromatic components. I'm going to zoom in on the spire of this building to illustrate what's going on here. I'll turn the intensity up, let's say to 1.8. I'll turn aberration X up to a fairly high value, like 50. So you can see we're splitting it into individual chromatic components and the number of passes that we're doing is defined right here. Now you'll notice it's certainly brighter at the center and then we have sort of a fall off as we have these chromatic passes. Right here at the top we have a linear fall off, but if I set this to none, the components will be all of equal intensity. Or if I set it to smooth, we'll have a smooth fall off from the center of the glow. We can control the overall saturation of these chromatic components with the chromatic saturation control, and we can shift the hue of the chromatic components one way or the other with the chromatic tint. I'll set this to zero and we'll move on to the mask section. The mask section allows us to define a very specific area of the image to be processed by the glow. I can show the masked area simply by checking this checkbox here. And let's say I want to move the glow just onto where the building is. So I'll set the mask position right there and I'll turn down the overall mask width. Now you'll notice it still kind of looks circular or elliptical based on this shape right here. I'll need to uncheck the link width and height, and then I can turn up this overall height here 
and kind of fine tune it so that I just get that building. Now, if I uncheck show mast area, you should see the glow just on the building right there. You can also rotate it and control the feathering of the mask, or you can even invert it to have this be an area to exclude by the glow. Now, if you need even more specific isolation than just a mask, there's a color isolation section right here. This is essentially a keyer built into the glow. So if I check this box here to isolate the color, and then I click on a color to use, let's say I want to use this uh, sort of aqua green down here, I can show the area that is being keyed by showing the mat right here, and I can fine tune the key using color width, color softness, controls, I can apply a softening to the overall mat, and I can also clip the black levels like so, as well as clip the white levels down like this. We've added a new noise control in, in here. This is a GPU-based noise. I'll zoom in here so you can see it a little bit better. It is useful either as a dither or just an overall stylized noise that you can add to your glow. Glow opacity should be pretty straightforward. It's the overall opacity of the glow and source opacity is the opacity of the source. We've already talked about the quality menu, but just to reiterate, you'll generally want to keep this at production. Production is a nine pass glow. Draft is two passes, which is very quick rendering, but also uh, just not as nice as the production quality. And extreme is a 15 pass glow. As you can see, it gets pretty extreme. I'll dial that down. Really nice, smooth, silky look, but it is a bit slower. And like I mentioned, Legacy rolls back to the old code used in the old version of Glow. And it is this softer, diffuse, sort of Gaussian blur uh, Glow approach. And that is Universe Glow from Red Giant. My name is Harry Frank. Thank you so much for watching.